We swipe past hundreds of photos every day on our social media feeds, which means every photo you do take has to work extra hard to get noticed. Normally, when a video starts off like this, someone's trying to sell you the secret to you know, getting a million followers or something. Instead of that, and well, because I have no idea how to get a million followers, I'd like to talk to you about how learning a basic visual language principle will improve your photography and as a side benefit, boost your social media performance. Let's say you're scrolling down your Instagram feed. One of those thumbnails will succeed in pulling your attention away from all of the other thumbnails on that feed. Have a look and as I scroll down, keep track of which one catches your attention. You should have one of those thumbnails stuck in your head now, but why did that specific image stay in your memory? What was special about it? You barely had time to see them all, let alone evaluate every single photo against your personal interests. And we're also talking about tiny thumbnails here, just you know, a few dozen pixels wide, which makes it hard to decipher many of the details in the photos. How is your mind choosing that one image? Well, your brain processes information in a progressive manner. That's similar to how some websites load up images. The website will quickly show a low res image while the high res one loads up in the background. And the reasoning behind both of these processes is pretty similar. It's to give an early indication to the viewer of what's happening. The low res image that loads up is a barely recognizable reduction of itself. You can make out some fake shapes and some differences of contrast. It's not a lot, but it's enough for your subconscious mind to evaluate the scene and importantly, decide whether or not it needs to react to any potential threats. The reason I'm dipping so much into the science right now is to demonstrate that we see an image twice. Our subconscious first, and then later our conscious mind. And becoming fluent in visual language gives you the ability to capitalize on both of those views. Let me give you an example using a principle called the figure ground relationship. If we go back to that Instagram feed, my eye was drawn to this one image, a photo of a woman dancing. And I can explain why that was with visual language and not just why that one photo stood out, but why all the others didn't. Our subconscious is constantly analyzing everything in our visual field and trying to make sense of it. Being able to very quickly separate a figure from the rest of a scene, that's a very useful evolutionary adaptation. Without it, we'll, we wouldn't have survived long as a species. We would have been eaten by predators, predators we hadn't even seen or noticed. And believe it or not, it's that very same instinct at work when you scroll down your Instagram feed. Your attention will gravitate to images that have strong figure ground relationship, like the one of a dancer that caught my eye earlier. To take advantage of this principle and to make your photos more subconsciously interesting, well, you need to learn how to create a strong figure ground relationship in your photos. This particular image used a few techniques that achieve this figure ground separation techniques that are strong enough to work even within a tiny thumbnail. The figure is shown in what's called an aspective view. That's a view that shows a clear representative outline of the figure. So with very little overlapping of body parts. It's the application of this technique that helps us quickly identify the characteristics of the figure as human, female, and dancer. The photo also uses strong tonal contrast the figure is dark while the background is plain and light. That's easy to process for the mind. Now let's look at another image from that feed. The one of a group of guys in a field or wherever they are. That photo does not have good figure ground relationship. It's hard to visually isolate the figures from their surroundings. The subjects are wearing dark trousers against a dark background and their faces kind of blend into the sky. It's not clear, at least not in the thumbnail and not to me what's going on here. My guess is that you probably hadn't even noticed this photo when we scrolled earlier. And I'd be very surprised if this was the one that stuck in your mind. With this photo, your perception has nothing to latch onto. So 
it probably just skipped right over it to a photo with a clear, more defined figure ground relationship. And that there is the power of figure ground relationship. It can be the difference between your image being noticed or just being ignored. A lot of this science is fairly new, but the effects of good composition, well, they've been known for a long time and they've been capitalized on by artists for half a millennia, longer even. The old masters like Caravaggio, Rubens, they were all taught how to deliberately design their composition so that it would appeal to the subconscious. They understood what made something visually interesting. That's why classical work like this one by Rubens will pull at your attention. It has been carefully crafted to work on two levels. Its underlying design contains geometric shapes hidden in plain sight. These appeal to our subconscious mind while the details in the narrative composition, while well, they speak to our conscious mind. Today, classically trained artists and designers use these same principles to capture our attention, to make us notice what they have to say and <laughs> what they have to sell. But these skills rarely get applied in the world of photography, which is a shame because, well, they work. They can help your photos stand out from the crowd, which in fact is something I hope I've just demonstrated. Figure ground relationship is just one principle you'll learn by becoming fluent in visual language. There are many more, but they're for later videos. And if you want to see those videos, subscribe down there. One more thing. I know these aren't your typical photography videos, but I hope they provide you with a broader, deeper understanding of how photography works. Cheers.